So what's going on guys, it's Jeremy, it's B Boxing. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel before you click on to any of the videos. Also comment below in the comment section if you guys have any opinions of what I'm saying in any of the videos. Like always, it's appreciated if you guys could drop me a quick sub to on my channel. So, legendary boxer Roberto Duran has came out and gave his opinion on what he thinks Sol Canelo Alvarez needs to do to defeat Gennady Golovkin on September the 16th when he faces the unified middleweight champion Golovkin for middleweight supremacy. Like, this is a big fight. Like, a lot of boxing fans like myself are looking forward to this fight. Forget all the fucking Mayweather McGregor antics. Yeah, it's entertaining, but this is a fight where it's a genuine 50 50, in my opinion. Like, a lot of people are saying it's not a 50 50 there, that Golovkin's just going to walk through Canelo, but I don't see it like that. Not at all, because I think Canelo is a very good fighter. And Roberto Duran, who was a fighter who fought at lightweight, who did start his career off at lightweight, probably the best lightweight to ever live, did end up facing the middleweight champion Marvin Hagler later on in his career. And that fight is an absolute classic. I suggest people go and watch that fight if they haven't watched it before. 15 rounds of just total action. And Roberto Duran gave it his all in that fight. And I'm going to quote him here. He says, it's a different time, of course. And today there are less great fighters, but there is more money. Golovkin, you cannot square up with him. You must give him angles as he will come right at you. He's trying to kill you. You must make him go crazy with movement and by spinning him and not letting him get set. And then you must box him. And he is right in a sense that you can't let Gennady Golovkin get set because Gennady Golovkin is a fighter who likes to get set and then throw his huge power punches. He's got fantastic balance, Gennady Golovkin. He likes to set his feet and he likes to throw the shots with evil intentions. That's what Gennady Golovkin does in there. But somebody who's going to give him movement, but not just any old movement. Like Sometimes fighters run against Gennady Golovkin like we saw that when William Monroe Jr. fought him like for the first couple of rounds William Monroe Jr. was just on his bike against Gennady Golovkin but he wasn't really doing much in terms of throwing many shots in the opening couple of rounds and that allowed Gennady Golovkin to hunt him down cut the ring off fantastically and he managed to drop William Monroe Jr. early on in that fight so if you must move against Gennady Golovkin you have to box him at the same time you have to throw punches we saw that when Danny Jacobs fought him, he was still throwing shots with Gennady Golovkin. He was making Gennady Golovkin reset and that was effective against him. And it was really frustrating Gennady Golovkin. So you just can't go in there and get on your bike and not do anything because Gennady Golovkin will hunt you down. He will cut the ring off and he will hit you with them power shots. So like Roberto Devan is saying here, you need to give him angles. You need to throw shots from angles and you need to be moving, spinning out of range. And really um, frustrate Gennady Golovkin in there. But Gennady Golovkin has very heavy hands. So I think if he catches Canelo Alvarez, he could hurt him. And Canelo Alvarez has only ever been hurt once in his career. He's never been down in his career, Canelo Alvarez. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think he has been. He was hurt against Miguel Cotto's older... Is it his older brother or his younger brother? It's, it's definitely Miguel Cotto's brother. And... He was wobbled in a fight against him early on in his career. But he managed to weather that storm and get the victory over Cotto's brother in that fight. But he's going to be in there with somebody like Gennady Golovkin, who is a force. And when he does get his man hurt, he's an excellent finisher. Gennady Golovkin, for all the power that he has, he's not really a prolific one-punch knockout artist, Gennady Golovkin. He's in there and he tends to break guys down, drops them a couple of times and... That's how he usually gets the finish. He doesn't really knock somebody out with one punch. Like We've seen Canelo Alvarez do that before in fights when he fought guys like Amir Khan and Carlos Baldemir and James Kirkland. But at the same time, Canelo is not the biggest puncher at middleweight, in my opinion. Don't get me wrong, he's got decent power. And I think if he's able to offset Golovkin, he might be able to back him up. And he might get Golovkin's respect in there. So Golovkin is not there hunting him down all night. But... He does need to throw punches against Gennady Golovkin. If he's going to use movement, then he needs to throw punches. And I think this could be a very competitive fight. Like, a lot of people are underestimating Canelo Alvarez. I'm not one of them people. Like, I would not be shocked in the slightest if Canelo Alvarez managed to get the victory. I don't think he'd be able to knock Gennady Golovkin out. I think if he was going to get the victory, he's going to get it on points. Like, I would not be shocked if Canelo Alvarez beat 
Gennady Golovkin on points. I would be a bit shocked if he managed to knock Gennady Golovkin out. But I don't think he will. And I think if Gennady Golovkin is going to get the victory, he's going to stop Canelo Alvarez. But has Canelo got a better chin than we think? Because, like I said, he's only ever been hurt once in his career. He's never really been shook up in any of his major fights. And he's fought guys like Austin Trout and James Kirkland and Aristandi Lara. He's never been hurt in any of these fights, Canelo Alvarez. So, yeah, this is a very interesting fight. Comment below in the comment section is Jay 